Very good evening. Welcome to State of Business on our television. I'm Ashing Sami Veer Singh. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. Much sought out forensic audit report of the bond scam distributor to the parliamentarians. Prices of key vegetables have gone down, says subject state minister. News in detail. Parliamentarian Ravi Karanayaka stresses that the compact disc of the forensic audit report of the central bank bond scam was not distributed to all parliamentarians and that it does not include all the information from 2002. Parliamentarian Ranjan Ramanayaka addressing the parliament yesterday said that he also has recordings of PTL director Arjuna Lochias to bribe him. Thus revisiting this point, Deputy Minister of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Kanchana Vijayasekara asked the parliamentarian Ramanayaka whether he has already tabled the so-called recordings and asked the MP Ramanayaka why he did not table the recordings earlier during the UNF-backed government. MP Vijay Sekara also questioned how some facts revealed by MP Ramanayaka was not revealed before the already concluded bond commission. Meanwhile, the forensic audit report of the central bank bond scam was distributed to the parliamentarians via a compact desk today. But UNP parliamentarian Ravi Kharanayaka highlighted that the forensic audit report in the CD does not include the entire details of the bond issuances from 2002 and that it has not been distributed to all parliamentarians. JVP MP Andra Kumar Disanayaka even today questioned why the meeting of party leaders was not held to decide a date for the debate or the forensic audit report. Speaking further, MP Kanchana Vijayasekara also told the parliament that around 900 million rupees have been spent for the report, but the Indian company which compiled the report claimed that they were not provided some important and necessary data while compiling the report. The government yesterday assured that the committee appointed to look into the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact was due in four months' time and promised to present the report in Parliament as soon as they receive it. JVP leader Anur Kumar Disanayaka questioned the government yesterday over the MCC agreement, which mostly claimed a detrimental agreement to the country. The JVP leader pointed out that the new government heavily criticised the MCC compact when they were in the opposition and now speaking about a committee to look into the agreement. He questioned how did they criticise the agreement without studying the contents of the agreement. Answering to the JVP leader, leader of the House, Minister Dinesh Gunawardana said that a committee led by Lalitha Siri Gunaruan has been appointed to look into the agreement. He also said the report of the committee is due in four months and it will be presented in the parliament no sooner they receive it. Meanwhile, JVP leader also questioned Speaker Karujai Surya the reasons for not allowing a date for the debate over the forensic audit report on the central bank bond scam. However, he also expressed his gratitude to the Speaker on his decision to table the report despite the Attorney General's advice to keep it under wraps. The Speaker assured that a party leader's meeting would be convened soon and a decision taken on the dates for the debate. The parliamentarian also asked for the copies of the report and the speaker said only one copy of the report is available at the moment and it will be kept in the library and copies for the MPs will be made available within few days. State Minister of Consumer Affairs Anura Priyadarshaneyapa says that the prices of key vegetables including red onions, big onions, potatoes and canned fish have gone down. State Minister made these observations while engaged in an inspection tour at the Colombo Manning Market today afternoon. State Minister of Consumer Affairs Anru Priyadarshaneyapa yesterday addressing a media briefing at the Prime Minister's office said that the vegetable price which was increased due to the recent rains will be reduced within a couple of weeks. The price of other essential food items like rice and sugar will be reduced in near future, the Minister further added yesterday. Thus, upon the inspection tour, the State Minister had conversations with vendors and traders at the Manning Market. 
Meanwhile, speaking to media, several sellers added that the prices of the vegetables and dried fish have gone up due to the natural disasters in Sri Lanka and recent floods in India and that the present government is not responsible for the recent price hike. We came for a tour in the Swat Cross Street to understand the prices available in the market. So now you can see big onion prices have come down, even potatoes prices have come down and even prices of red onion also have come down. Canned fish also has come down. So you can see, we can see a marked difference compared to few weeks ago and now. And we have now realized that Indian market also will open us because they will also have a bumper harvest during this time. So in the coming weeks, we hopefully we see that most of the items prices will come down. That's a great sign. A latest report by the World Bank says that disasters are annually costing Sri Lanka 50 billion rupees or around 0.4% of gross domestic product in damages which requires preventive measures to reduce climate risks. The report also identifies Sri Lanka as one of the world's most at risk for climate-related disasters. The World Bank report, titled as Contingent Liabilities from Natural Disasters Sri Lanka, says that on average, Sri Lanka experiences 50 billion rupees or 313 million US dollars in annual disaster losses related to housing, infrastructure, agriculture and relief. It highlights that around 32 billion rupees of damages are from floods and cyclones and high winds cause 11 billion rupees in losses while droughts and landslides cause 5.2 billion rupees and 1.8 billion rupees in damages respectively. The 58 pages long World Bank report stresses that disasters are costly on human lives as well. With the 2017 floods leading to 313 passing away and the 2018 floods leaving another 13 persons dead. However, the government had managed to provide the thousands who became homeless 1.2 million rupees each to build a house and 0.4 million rupees each to procure land or settle on state-owned land. Global Climate Risk Index has ranked Sri Lanka as the second most affected by extreme weather events over the past 20 years. The report clearly says that disasters disproportionately affect the poor with 77% of the population in areas highly vulnerable to floods and droughts employed as smallholder farmers. The World Bank estimates disaster-related liabilities for the government on average at 11 billion rupees a year or 1% of government expenditure. When disasters strike, the government has to halt capital expenditure projects and reallocate funds to respond to emergencies and rehabilitate communities, the World Bank said. As Sri Lanka is facing tight fiscal space, disasters add greater strain to the Treasury, the World Bank further said. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Central Bank Governor Prof. W. D. Lakshman stresses that productivity-oriented expansion, growth of agricultural and manufacturing with a proper handle of imports and exports are obligatory for the economic takeoff. Prof. W. D. Lakshman made these observations as the chief guest at the 61st Annual General Meeting of the National Chamber of Commerce held in Colombo yesterday. Production growth after all is necessary though not sufficient to enhance and uplift human and social conditions of living. Our achievements in educational, health and gender parity areas have been particularly impressive, although clearly problems and issues remain. With the collaboration of foreign capital and domestic state capital, private capital could take the country into the next level of growth. Productivity-oriented expansion and growth of agriculture and manufacturing, targeting both import substitution and export promotion, would, we expect, enable Sri Lanka in the next few years to come to achieve its so far elusive economic takeoff. Playing its much-hyped engine of growth role, the private sector, I hope will work collaboratively with the public sector to achieve national goals.
Speaking further, Central Bank Governor Professor W.D. Lakshman noted that Sri Lanka can make use of the abundance of skilled and semi-skilled labour force to leapfrog the growth. He also emphasised that the infrastructure investments in the war-torn areas has increased the inter-regional connectivity and has opened new markets. Today, Sri Lanka possesses a large pool of skilled and semi-skilled workforce. In addition, the infrastructure investments of the government in the post-conflict area have tremendously improved inter-regional connectivity within the country. The pervasive telecommunications network is the other significant infrastructural achievement. These investments have not only improved access to existing markets, but have also opened up new market opportunities. Sri Lanka today is well on its way to take its place in the global digital revolution. Against this background, Sri Lanka endeavours to progress beyond the upper middle income economy level. The country is reorienting its growth strategy, highlighting and supporting the domestic capital and entrepreneurship to help develop a strong national bourgeoisie. The central bank data shows that the headline inflation, as measured by the year-on-year -year change in the National Consumer Price Index, increased to 6.2% in last December from 4.1% in last November. Meanwhile, the change in the NCPI measured on an annual average basis increased to 3.5% in December 2019 from 3% in November 2019. Headline inflation as measured by the year-on-year -year change in NCPI increased in last December due to monthly increase of prices of items in the food category along with the statistical effect of the low base prevailed in December 2018. Food inflation increased substantially to 8.6% in December 2019 from 4% in November 2019 while non-food inflation remained unchanged at 4.2%. The change in the NCPI measured on an annual average basis increased to 3.5% in December last year from 3% in November 2019. Monthly change of NCPI recorded at 1.6% in December 2019 and it was solely due to the price increases observed in the items of the food category caused by adverse weather conditions prevailed during December 2019. Within the food category, prices of vegetables, rice, red onions, coconut and fish recorded increases in December 2019. Meanwhile, prices of items in the non-food category recorded a decrease during the month owing to price decreases of the items in communication, housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels, health and miscellaneous goods and services subcategories due to downward tax revisions introduced by the government with effect from 1st December 2019. The core inflation, which reflects the underlying inflation in the economy, decreased to 5.2% in December last year from 5.5% in November 2019 on year-on-year -year basis. The Board of Investment of Sri Lanka facilitated another prospective investor to go ahead with a state-of-art manufacturing plant for the textile industry. Knitline Apparels will be setting up a high-tech garment factory specialised in the manufacturing of flat-knit fashion apparel. Under this agreement signed recently, the company will manufacture knitwear such as pullovers, dressers, sweaters and beanies in Sri Lanka. It was also informed that the company is planning to use modern machinery and technology developed in Japan to manufacture its products. The factory will be situated in Vattala with factory space of 12,000 square feet, enabling employment of an initial workforce of 80 people. Thus, the agreement was signed by Chairman of the Board of Investment Susanta Ratnaika and Chief Executive Officer of Knitline Apparels Riz Onis. We will be back after a short break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 27.09 points to close at 5,941.42, and the S&P SL20 gained 23.06 points to close at 2,849.29. The turnover was 918 million rupees, and over 21 million shares were traded. Up next are forex rates.
And that's all the news for today and log into our Facebook page to get the latest news and updates. Also send us your comments, views and opinions via our email address and hotline. With that, we will be signing out today. See you tomorrow at the same time. Until then, take care. Good night.